Now I know, I know I said that I wasn't going to be building any more doors for these Minecraft challenge videos, but there is one comment that has been popping up down in my comment section a lot recently, like a whole ton, pretty much every single video, there's at least one person that requests I take on this challenge, and that is to build a Bumbo Cactoni piston door. Now I'm not even 100% certain this is going to be possible. Just as a quick disclaimer for anyone that's confused, if you don't know what a Bumbo Cactoni is, it's this. Built by Iskal85 on the Hermitcraft server, it's essentially me as a cactus with a sombrero. Now I've laid out all the pistons for this thing, and as far as I can tell, I think it's going to be possible. At this point in time, I'm saying I think it's going to be possible because this top bit is actually going to be pretty tricky. So we need to be able to power that. And then I suppose if we have a line of redstone here, yeah, we'll be able to bud power all of those pistons underneath by causing updates to them probably using these pistons. Okay, but then that will probably interact with those pistons as well. Hmm. Still, I think we should be able to manage. When in doubt, observers save the day. So that will mean that if we place one of these in, you can see that this piston fires, it's not going to interact with these pistons right here, and then we can cause updates to those observers using pistons that face downwards, so they're not going to be affecting those pistons either, and then we can just have a redstone line up at the top right here, which is going to be powering both sets of them. Okay, this is good. So we've wiped out the top section. Right, I'd say just work from the bottom up. I'm going to be honest, so far, things are going better than expected. So I think I might have just about finished up the bottom section, so we should add probably a repeater set to three ticks there, that will do a suitable amount of delay, and that should allow these blocks to get out of the way before the double piston extender starts. So if you flick this lever, okay, that was a little bit too fast. All right, let's try that again. When in doubt, just kind of flick the lever and see what happens. Oh my word, I've broken the whole door. Now that's a little bit more like it. Look at that. High speed, everything moved out of the way, things are looking good. Okay, now we just need to do the falling edge, which is pushing those blocks back up, which to be honest with you, shouldn't actually be that difficult, because the first part of the circuit actually does it, but then it double extends, which isn't what we want. Well, I think it's safe to say that we've nailed that. There it is. Opening and closing all done. I mean, if we could compact this, that would make quite a nice door to just have around the base. And now, as far as I can tell, I've also done the arms. Now, the arms are relatively simple because, of course, all we have to do is retract these blocks out of the way, so we're just moving them down and around. We've got some slightly strange piston arrangements. Don't normally see this sort of thing indoors, but I think it is going to work. And if you flick the lever, you can see that, yes, yes, it does. So, I would say, I mean, that's the bottom half of the door. Pretty much all done and dusted, and it actually looks pretty cool opening and closing. I mean, sure, it's not the it's not the most beautiful opening sequence or closing sequence in the world, but it does the trick. Now what we have to do is we have to move this middle section out the way. So this central bit right here. And the way that we're going to do that is by using this triple piston extender, but it's going to have to be a bit of a strange triple piston extender, because A, I can't go into this area or this area, so it has to only be two blocks high, which could be tough. But also, because this is 12 blocks, we're going to have to fire down the line, one tick pulses, and then they're going to have to extend, and then the retraction should be similar to how it normally is. And that has caused me some serious headaches, trying to make my way around all of like the hat and the arm and everything like that, doing all the inputs for the triple piston extender, has been, it's been tricky. And also the triple piston extender itself is pretty tricky, because as I mentioned earlier on, we need to go down the line like this. So this is the way that we're going to be extending it. So we need to spit that one out, then we need to push this across, and then that will spit that one out and that will push the body back in, and then the retraction will just be a standard triple piston extender sequence. So it'll be extension, and then retract that out of the way, move this back, pull that, pull this one, pull this one back, and then pull that one back, and that should open everything up, whilst also not affecting the arm or also the sombrero. Oh. But I have just thought of a way to make it simpler, I think. Yes, I can put a piston right here, which will then grab those slime blocks and pull them across. So now we don't need a triple piston extender, all we need is a double piston extender, and that's much, much easier, because that was kind of hurting my brain a little bit. I think, it, I think it's quite obvious that I'm not going for compactness here, because there are redstone circuits kind of sprawling out all over the place, 
But this observer right here is going to be the thing that is doing the double extending. So you can see that there is the retraction of the double extender, and then here is the extension, and we've got the whole lot. So that makes its way over to that side, and then all we have to do is run an input into this sticky piston right here, which we can do pretty simply. However, that is one of the hands, and that is the sombrero. So I suppose we're probably going to have to do this a little bit like this. So that is how it will work. There we go. So that was actually functioning. And now we just need to cause an update to this observer. And then we can create the redstone circuit from there. No way! I actually just did it straight away. I was just, I was fiddling around with the pistons. And I was making sure that, you know, the timing was good. I just chucked in a little pulse extender right here. And it works. And it looks fantastic. Just look at this thing unfolding. So there it is. His body is now open, and you can see that we still have all of the gaps. We have maintained the gaps that are running through here. I think we can even maintain... Can we maintain the slabs? I don't think we can maintain that slab, but we can maintain these slabs going through. So that is all good. And then when we flick the lever again, you can see that this is functioning. This gets pushed across, and then it gets grabbed, and there it is. So, Bumbo Cactoni's body is now fully completed. Time for his hat. So I've just done a little bit of wiring for part one. Now let's see if this thing functions and I've just realized I've actually done it completely the wrong way around. So bear with me. Okay, that's now fixed and I've now got the timings correct. So if we flick that lever, oh dear, that's not good. That may have broken. Okay, I'm actually going to make sure that we have some space here because I really don't want to break the bottom half of the circuitry. But yeah, that did not look like it functioned, did it? So let's try again. This time I've added in a bit of a pulse extender, so hopefully that should mean that this double piston extender will work. And also, I've changed up the timings, so now the blocks should be retracted out the way before the double piston extender fires. So we should see that all of these blocks will be retracted back. Now let's give it a whirl. Click the lever. That looked pretty good to me. Now, it looks like we can change up the timings ever so slightly to make things faster. But let's try again. So we've got these two blocks and these two blocks. That's the top of his hat. Now, I don't know. That might not be enough time. That's pretty good. I've just realized it's the pulse extender which is making the double extender take so long. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, now we just need to do the closing. And that could actually be everything completed for this Bumbo Cactoni door. I can't believe we've actually managed to pull this thing off. And to do that one, all we have to do is we have to link up this just like that. So that should be part one done and dusted, which will fire our first set of pistons, pushing those blocks down. We then need to fire these pistons here, which will push those blocks across. So that can run down like this. We'll have a repeater set to maybe three ticks. And then we're going to need another monostable circuit there to make sure that that pulse is short enough because they need to spit out their block. So let's just do something like that. And then for the final part of it, we need to fire these pistons again. So I'm actually going to take the output from this thing. We're going to give it two ticks of delay. And let's just go across like this and up and round like that. And I imagine that should hopefully do the trick. Now that is a little bit of slapdash and that has gone in incredibly quickly. But if we flick the lever, let's see what happens. It's all primed and ready to go. So... Oh, that was so close! We need that to be shorter. Wait, what? Yes, we do need it to be shorter. Okay, so, breaking the blocks, let's do it. So we flick the lever here. And that opens everything a little bit slowly, but there we go. And then that... Closes everything. It's done! I'm gonna change up that pulse extender, I'm gonna link this thing up into the circuitry, and then we'll have ourselves a working Bumbo Cactoni door. I can't believe we've actually done it. So here it comes, the first test of the full door fully operational. Flick the lever, and... Oh, it broke. Yeah, there had to be something, didn't there? So we had a block protruding down into the arm area, so I'm having to rewire a little bit of the double piston extender, which I'm hoping shouldn't cause too much of an issue. So we'll have to replace that with that so we don't power that piston accidentally. I think this should be okay. 
Okay, that should fix up the double piston extender. Let's try that again then. There it is. That's looking a lot more promising. And there we go. We have got a full Bumbo Cactoni shaped door. Now let's just fill in any of the gaps that we have. So let's make sure that there's a block there. That should be fine. And a block there. That should be fine as well. <laughs> but there it is. That's hilarious. It's almost like in the cartoons, Bumbo Cactoni's kind of run through a wall and it's just left, it's left a Bumbo Cactoni shaped hole going through it. But anyway, if we flick the lever again, you can see that everything closes back up. And there we go. Oh, fantastic. I am so happy with this thing. That has gone absolutely perfectly. Right. Well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That just about wraps everything up for today's episode. If you did enjoy, please drop to that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.